Life Force is a rare accessory that slightly increases health regeneration speed. The system reported that the hero could unlock this reward. The young man had forgotten about it when he opened the gift package. He saw that he had received a high-ranking growth stone. Kang Yusung thought that finally, there was something valuable. He thought he didn't need this reward now but would keep it for later. The young man asked for his assistant's help and said it was time for Darky to eat. The cat started devouring all the dirt in the surroundings voraciously. Kang Yusung noted that this was troublesome, but you couldn't entrust everything to your spirit. Having the required level, the young man thought while his sword moved following his mind to destroy the enemies. He realized that this was quite a useful ability. The system reported that the hero's level had increased. With a higher level, Kang Yusung became more successful and aggressive when facing approaching monsters. Monster blood splattered everywhere. The system reported that the sword control ability level had increased. This was another achievement. Kang Yusung realized that an adult sand predator was preparing to attack him. The ice weapons were ready. Our hero thought there was still much work to be done here. Maybe the night was over, but the young man was not discouraged. He knew he would have a long rest after winning the victory. The young man turned his attention back to the cat figure chewing on food non-stop. The cat was eating all the monsters it encountered. The sand predator released its tentacles and moved to attack the young man. It was a massive monster. The young man firmly directed all his ice swords to fend off the giant's attacks with his mind. The sand predator was defeated and chopped into pieces. The system reported that the ice sword crafting ability level had increased. Kang Yusung saw a caravan in the desert and decided to approach it for reconnaissance. The caravan consisted of knights. The civilian said that the knights were brave warriors dedicated to the god of light. The young man asked what these brave warriors had been doing last night. The source said that the knight's priority was to protect the caravan. The young man thought that even in such a situation, they did not leave their carts. Kang Yusung asked which faction these knights belonged to. The source said they were noble knights from the Order of the Bloody Cross. The young man wondered if these noble knights were carrying a golden calf statue. The knight replied that the messenger of light could ignore the cart. The knight also suggested the young man focus on the task given by the Almighty. The young man smiled and observed that there was a clever man among the knights who had decided to give him a lesson. Kang Yusung thought that these knights used heart aura. Moreover, a messenger of light had descended upon them, giving them a difficult task. After saying that, Kang Yusung felt even more curious. The young man observed the caravan and wondered what kind of items required such a high level of security. The man negotiating with our hero said not to overdo it. Kang Yusung grabbed the neck of the person next to him with one hand, activated an ice shield in his other hand, and used it to defend against the arrows flying at him. The young man shouted that if the caravan didn't want to die, they should duck and hide from arrows flew through the air. The young man continued to hold his ground with his ice shield. The knights guarding the defense shouted that they were under attack by heretics. Mounted attackers approached the caravan. The horsemen declared that they were evil rebels. How dare they attack the Holy Kingdom's territory? Kang Yusung admired the horsemen's tactics. They attacked with bows and then retreated. The leader of the knights shouted that they should give the attackers a chance to retrieve their objective, remain in position, and activate their mana shields. The knights only defended themselves while civilians accompanying the caravan began to fall to the enemy's arrows. The young man thought the knights didn't care about their comrades. Kang Yusung said the knights could defend their own golden calf. The young man immediately attacked the horsemen. The hero's goal was to protect the caravan and ensure the object was delivered intact. Kang Yusung threw his spear at the enemy. The spear landed in front of a horseman. The attackers decided that the enemy's attack wouldn't reach them. Suddenly, a stranger appeared, attacking the knights with skill and agility. There were casualties among the defenders. Kang Yusung drew his dagger and jumped into close combat with the horseman. He needed to achieve the goal of this assault. Kang Yusung realized the stranger attacking the caravan was a desert elf. The young man leaped towards the desert elf, still defending himself from arrows with his ice shield. The desert elf attacked Kang Yusung, shouting that he would destroy the cunning foreigner. A close combat ensued. Kang Yusung managed to knock the cold weapon from his opponent's hand. The dark one came to our hero's aid, catching an arrow aimed at the young man with his teeth. The young man thought the king served by the desert elves had overstepped. He asked his opponent what exactly was in the wagon. The elf said the young man wouldn't dare manipulate him. Kang Yusung used the desert elf as a human shield to protect himself from the archers. The elf told the archers to ignore him and shoot this enemy. The archers complied. Dozens of arrows flew at Kang Yusung. Kang Yusung reactivated his ice shield to protect himself and his captive. The desert elf said that even though his opponent had captured him, they would still know nothing. He would remain silent. The man said he was only interested in one thing, what was in the wagon. He needed to know to decide which side to take. Kang Yusung asked his captive if he really believed he didn't have the power to defeat them all. 
The rivals looked at each other in silence. They understood many things without words. Kang Yusung realized that the desert elf understood what would happen to his comrades if he moved even a little. The young man placed his ice sword on the elf's shoulder and asked one final question. What was being transported in the wagon? The elf was furious. How dare this man call the object a princess? He deserved to be destroyed just for that. Kang Yusung said he now understood everything. It turned out that these people had kidnapped their princess. The young man told the fairy to go back and inform them that he would provide special assistance and save their life. The fairy replied that she couldn't do that. Kang Yusung responded that it would be better to have another chance than to die here and now. The desert fairy ran toward her companions. One of the knights ran towards the young man. The knight asked why the young man let the heretics live and allowed them to leave. The hero answered that he needed to confirm something first. Young turned and walked toward the caravan. A mounted knight approached him and placed his sword at the young man's chest, asking where he was going. The young man, the hero king, told the knight to step aside. There was something he needed to check. The knight said he couldn't let the young man pass, even if he was a messenger of light. The young man said it would be better for the knight to step aside while he was still asking politely. The demon had already shown his cunning eyes. The young man approached the cart and opened it, saying he could save her. The young man approached the cart's passenger. Kang Yusung saw a girl with shackles in the cart. It was an unusual sight. The girl asked if she truly needed the sympathy of a stranger. She was a princess from the kingdom of Ayub, an elf. The system issued a message to the young man not to neglect his duties and to fulfill his duty to the light. The ruler of the light warned the player about his actions. The young man stated that because she had asked about him, he had no other choice. He drew his ice dagger. The young man ignored the system's warning and, with one strike, shattered the shackles binding the prisoner. The system reported that the young man had met a hidden condition and saved the princess. The system announced that the young man had received 300,000 achievement points and the mission now changed to escorting the princess back to her kingdom. The tower's difficulty level had increased. Kang Yusung said that the game was broken, but freedom was something extraordinary, and he agreed. The system said that the young man would have to pay for disobeying the light. The young man looked to the sky and saw a winged creature descending to the ground from an opening. The system reported that one of the tower's powers had turned against him. The guardians of the light appeared in the sky, which was not a good sign. The guardians of the light served the ruler of the light and executed his orders. The ruler of the light watched over the hero wherever there was light. The knights announced that the followers of the light had descended upon them. Regardless of the young man's foreign status, they had to destroy him because he had challenged the light. Kang Yusung said that these knights had become too bold after help arrived. The princess asked who it was. The young man thought before the hero king said that the girl could relax, he also had someone to rely on for support. Kang Yusung stood in front of the girl and said, let the light fall, let there be darkness. The system displayed a message that the ruler of the shadows supported his decision. The shadow council granted the young man a buff of absolute darkness shroud. The knights screamed in fear because they couldn't see anything. Indeed, there was no light around as if it had been switched off with a lever. The hero king said that he knew this side offered much better rewards. The knights screamed in fear that they didn't want that fate. The light guardians roamed in absolute darkness. The knights screamed in fear as they suffered defeat without realizing where it came from. The sailors were confused, not knowing how to proceed. Total darkness covered the land. The hero king took advantage of the surprise factor of the darkness, rose, and used his sword to attack the light guardians. The winged creatures screamed, wondering how this pathetic human could do such a thing. The system had issued a message indicating that the ruler of the light faction had an irreconcilable hatred towards the protagonist. The light ruler's favor had increased significantly, and the player's status in the faction had risen. Vulnerability to darkness had increased. The young man thought he could finally see and notice that he was walking in the right direction. A large number of factions continued to observe the young man's actions in the tower. His actions had genuinely aroused interest. The tower world and the world inside the tower were not the same. The bloody cross knights and the elves were creatures of the tower, they were components of the tower world. However, the rulers and their powers were on a higher level, representing the tower world itself. Players were mediators between these two worlds, the power allowing rulers to intervene in the tower world. However, players were not obedient puppies who only followed the ruler's will. The young man remembered how the people accompanying the caravan said that the god of light had pitied them. The light messenger was with them. Initially, the purpose of the attack was to protect the caravan and safely deliver the object. The elf then stated that the hero dared not refer to the object as the princess. The young man thought of finding hidden meanings within the tower. Players could make their own decisions as prophesied in the Shadow Council. The protagonist thought he would get better rewards if he rebelled against the light. If there was an idea, there was no need to doubt whether it could be done. Even the rulers could not resist the laws and restrictions that bound them. 
The light overseers called the young man a foolish creature. Kang Yusung felt how much the light observers hated him. As long as he was in the sea level tower, the angels above level 8 couldn't come here because of the tower's rules. The light observers decided to destroy the darkness with their light. The creatures guarding the light sent brilliant lightning to the ground, destroying the knights accompanying the caravan. The knights didn't understand why the light messengers did this to them. The young man observing what happened thought that this was the crazy power of the ninth level. They didn't care about their followers at all. The elf thought that these knights shouldn't complain because they did the same to their opponents. In this environment, the young man thought his vision became clear for just a moment. The buff power was indeed extraordinary. The absolute darkness curtain was present, its power legendary. Within the curtain, attack power increased significantly. The curtain did not distinguish between friend and foe. Kang Yusung thought his enemy was obviously strong, with fewer knights surviving. Our hero decided that he must be much more careful. Princess Siria crossed her arms over her chest with tears in her eyes and looked at our hero. The young man, without wasting time, apologized to the princess and carried her, fleeing to a safe place. The light guardians found him, only increasing the risk of being struck by their lightning. Kang Yusung asked Darkie for help, saying that there was a job for the cat at that moment. The young man offered the crystal he received as a gift to the cat, telling him that he could eat it, and then Darkie had to protect the princess. The cat accepted the highest ranked growth stone. The effect of this stone provided a large amount of experience stored within it. The frightened princess screamed and was not to be approached. The light guardians kept circling in the sky, selecting their targets on the ground. After Darkie swallowed the growth stone, his size increased significantly. The young man calmly left the princess under the protection of the now large cat. Now he could focus on his immediate task. The young man decided that now he must use his shadow sword, as it was the optimal artifact for this battle. The light guardian said it was futile, the sword of a mortal man couldn't even touch them. The young man ascended the sword-like steps towards the sky and approached the light guardians. Now, this clash did not seem impossible. The young man thought that close combat with the winged beings clearly put him at a disadvantage. He couldn't reach his target. The young man struggled in vain, wondering if he should keep holding on without being able to effectively counterattack. The only thing the young man managed to do was to slightly cut the feathers of the light guardian's wings. He wondered why they were so fast even under the debuff. Kang Yusung decided to retreat temporarily. While retreating, he had to use his ice shield to avoid attacks from behind. The young man continued to feel annoyed by the situation where he had to jump from one sword to another. He decided not to retreat and face everything at once. The hero king decided that in this case, he had to use super strength. The light guardians shouted that they would not let the wretched human go. The young man couldn't hide from them. The inevitable happened, one of the light spears hit the young man and pierced his body. Kang Yusung stopped. One of the light guardians held the young man, skewering him with a spear like a fish on a hook. The other winged beings immediately rushed towards the young man, thinking this was their chance and the mortal man must be destroyed. The hero king activated the battle-tested adventurer's blessing. The effect of the blessing, which clearly worked to cheat death, made the lethal attack ineffective. The system lit up to initialize the location of the light swords. The light guardian shouted for everyone to stop because something strange was happening. Our hero said it was too late. A large number of flying swords went straight towards the light guardians. It was a well-organized and effectively executed trap. The hero king directed and controlled the swords, aiming them. The light was very unpredictable but had a positive effect. The young man decided that it was time to end his opponents. He had been here too long. The light guardians were destroyed. After the battle was over, the young man descended to the ground. The system leveled him up again after the battle ended. The booster was taken from him. On the ground lay dead knights and slain winged creatures. The young man realized that the caravan had been completely destroyed and the knights might have failed in their task. The young man approached his friend, Yan, and saw that the cat had returned to its normal size. The crystal's effect had worn off. The serious princess approached the young man and said that she had a question for the alien. The girl asked why the young hero betrayed his people and went so far for her. The young man smiled and said that the system gave the best rewards on this side, and he did everything for money. No, said the princess seriously, aren't they your people? Do you hope to ask for a ransom after saving them? The young man replied that he was sick with a terrible disease, hating people. The man looked at the princess and said that her question sounded very strange, he couldn't think of any other answer. Kang Yusung kept thanking the dark side for being able to protect the princess. The girl, under the shadow of the cat, remained under his protection. A few days later, some horsemen appeared at the border of the elf kingdom of Ayab. They were King Gyro and his companion, Princess Syria. The princess spoke to the young man and said that she felt indebted to him and sincerely thanked the stranger. The young man said he had not yet received his reward. The girl smiled and replied that she knew how to choose her words. Princess Syria extended her hand to the young man and asked him to grasp it. The girl clenched her fist. 
The young man received information from the system that he had passed the Pale Desert Tower, which was a high difficulty mode. The hero received a mark of trust, a kind of reward. The princess handed a crystal to the young man on a string. Princess Syria gave the mark of trust to the young man. Its true value was still unknown, but it would surely be useful someday. Princess Syria of the Elf Kingdom was kidnapped, but a young man brought her back, and she later became queen. The carriage arrived in Busan. The young man looked out the carriage window, his gaze calm and indifferent. Four hours earlier, Mr. Park had told Kang Yusung that he had to go to Busan. The man was very excited. The young man asked why it was necessary. Was something happening there? Mr. Park said that nothing had happened yet, but when it did, it would be too late to go. Kang Yusung asked why he had to go there. Mr. Park said that something would happen there soon. Natasha Ivanova was a well-known criminal player, known as one of the black players hiding from her government. This woman arrived illegally at the port of Busan and began camping in the tower with her four companions. She had a legendary skill card, the Absolute Darkness Curtain. Mr. Park asked the young man if he had met zombies on the train he had taken. The young man said that he knew Mr. Park was watching him and asked if he could request a car. Mr. Park said that he had received information about the tower where Ivanova's group had entered. He asked the young man to go there. Mr. Park added that it was a level 5 tower. The system had issued a level 5 tower mission. It was a zombie apocalypse tower with biochemical risk factors present. The goal of the raid was to survive until the designated time. The time remaining to enter the tower was 13 minutes. Kang Yusung managed to enter the tower before the designated time. In the early 20th century, a pharmaceutical company discovered a deadly virus in its secret laboratory in Busan. After that, the entire city was closed off. Kang Yusung was shocked, he knew nothing normal could be expected from a level 5 tower. He had to survive and escape from the hungry infected and the secret support forces. A pharmaceutical company, a terrifying monster filled with the infected roams around the tower. It is a strange and ugly creature. Kang Yusung is ready to face this monster. He wonders if it is right to call it a zombie. Kang Yusung keeps a safe distance, asking his cat not to get too close to the monster. He is at a safe distance, but if necessary, he is ready to attack the monster and protect his master. A giant devil whale that had become dark he opens its mouth and swallows the monster. The monster is swallowed whole, and the danger is averted. The young man says that the growth stone has changed a lot. His cat is unclear why the cat chose the form of a whale. Satisfied and happy, Darky transforms back into a cat. He successfully completes his task. The young man hears applause. It is applause for him. The boy looks around and sees a red-haired girl accompanied by a bodyguard approaching him. The girl continues clapping, saying she was waiting for the young man. Our hero observes, this is where Natasha Ivanova is. The girl says with genuine interest that she sees before her a true hero of all heroes. Ivanova asks, can't a young man leave a villain like her alone in this tower? Kang Yusung says that Ivanova is a member of the Red Mafia, pursued by her government, and landed illegally with her accomplices at the port of Busan. The girl laughs and responds, will this hero really capture her and imprison her forever? Our hero shows the kind of sword he has and says she can be calm for now. He does not realize what kind of threat she might pose. The girl says it is an unpleasant task to judge her from the perspective of his corrupt country's intelligence service. Kang Yusung says he suspects Ivanova and her accomplices plan to surround him and feed him to the zombies, and her small gang members are already hiding somewhere in ambush. The girl is surprised and has to admit, so, Kang Yusung knows that I am in your country's intelligence service and still you dare to come here. Kang Yusung says that the girl is wrong. It was really his plan to become a snack for the zombies. The young man explains that he had no other chance to gain legendary abilities. The girl says she knows, very effectively avoiding the young man's attack. The young man tries to attack his opponent using an ice sword. Ivanova orders her accomplices to attack the hero king. The bandits use firearms to attack, intending to use the full power of machine guns to assault the opponent. The young man tries hard to avoid the enemy's bullets. The young man avoids the deadly attack and remains uninjured while continuing to approach his opponent. The young man approaches the explorer, swings his sword, and almost delivers a fatal blow to the girl. The girl suddenly disappears and does not reappear. The young man thinks it is a shame the girl is gone. He continues to avoid the enemy's bullets, determining that there are three shooters working against him. There is also a sniper among the attackers. Kang Yusung does not stop, realizing that he is still alive thanks to his movements, but something is wrong. The young man says that as far as he knows, the absolute darkness cloak debuff now affects everyone. Therefore, the young man does not understand how the enemies can still shoot at the target. Kang Yusung suggests that the reason must be something else. The young man says he will once again need help from Darky. One of the shooters thought that the young man's ice shield was too strong, so he decided to change tactics. The pistolero heard a cat's meow from behind. The cat said, meow, and pounced on the villain. 
The shooter had no chance to escape, and the cat easily dispatched the villain with a light swipe of its paw. One of the shooters realized what was happening and shouted for his comrades to get out of the cat's shadow, or they would die. Kang Yusun wondered if the remaining arrows could truly see the shadow of his darkling. The young man was trapped. The dagger held by Ms. Ivanova appeared at his throat. The girl said that if the young man didn't want trouble, he should behave. That would determine whether he would be allowed to live. The young man asked if someone who truly wanted to destroy would say such a thing. Ivanova said the young man shouldn't underestimate her intelligence services. Ivanova stated that she wanted to talk to the young man about the achievement points he received a few days ago for successfully passing the level 5 tower. There was a very high amount of them. The girl asked, it seems the young man cleared it in hard mode, but then only went to lower level towers. The same thing happened last season when survival skills were removed. Ms. Ivanova told her colleague to immediately get rid of the cat. The other details would be known later. The young man was silent. Ivanova said that in this case, it would be better if the young man talked a lot. Kang Yusung asked, how will he kill him? The young man said that in this case, he wasn't real and his efforts would be in vain. The girl was very surprised. The young man explained that initially, this wasn't an absolute darkness curtain, but rather a trap to lure him. Right, isn't it? Yon asked. Ivanova created this trap to obscure your perception. It only works with the enemy's senses. Kang Yusung said that there was only one option to test their assumption. The ability to create legendary level illusions allowed him to manipulate what his target saw. Kang Yusung directed several of his swords at Ivanova. The girl was very close to the young man. Ivanova was temporarily disabled. Our hero said that she was good at deceiving others, but that didn't seem to be her main strength. The young man said that it seemed now he had to be the food for the zombies. The system reported that a player from the tower had died. The young men were distracted. The secret forces from the tower detected the presence of the survivors. A spy drone flying over the area reported that several survivors had been detected. Armed robots appeared on the roof of a building. The robots received orders to destroy Ivanova's men. They decided it was time to retreat. The armed robots didn't give them the chance, appearing in front of the man with the intent to destroy him. The robot said they were following a secret protocol. The system reported that another player had died. Kang Yusung looked from behind the barrier. The young man wondered if he could stop it or if he should disable the shield first. One of the robots launched an energy cannon at our hero. Kang Yusung managed to duck and thought that at this speed, the robots would be able to destroy everything around them. A fairy from the shop appeared in front of the young men. The fairy thought, what a pity two of them had died before they could use their achievement points. The girl pointed at our hero and said that all this happened because of his mistake. The young man apologized and at the same time offered to repair the damage. This meant he was willing to buy from the shop. The elf offered the young man to buy a set of cards. Then she would make an exception and forgive him. The elf offered him to buy a set of cards, then make an exception and forgive him. When the store opened, the ceasefire was cancelled. The young man suggested the elf sell a set of cards to Miss Ivanova. The fighting in front of the store always made the girl sad. The elf suggested Ivanova spend her points on some purchases before dying. Ivanova pretended to be sad. The elf told Ivanova that she would never get out of the tower alive. Ivanova thought that after hearing those words, no one would want to live. The shopkeeper girl offered Ivanova to buy a set of cards. If a legendary card came out, it would mean the girl had a chance to survive. The elf suggested to the young man to spend a lot of money on a set of cards and said he could get a legendary card. The young man replied that he had the ability to get a legendary card. Ivanova asked if she really needed to spend all 374,400 achievement points to get a set of cards with random abilities. What was the point of this transaction? Kang Yusung observed the business developments in silence. He also felt that many things did not make sense in such a store. Ivanova looked at the cards she had bought, but they were just ordinary cards. The girl realized her achievements were in vain. The elf told Miss Ivanova not to give up. The legendary card would surely appear, so they had to buy several more sets of cards. The young man said that watching a house burn was enjoyable. The boy thought it was fun to watch. Ivanova stated that she would check the last set of cards. The elf said there were still seven more sets of cards. 